everyone, so today we have a question from Wendy, and Wendy is wondering well, how on earth can she control her sugar cravings, okay? So first of all, I'd like to give a shout out to Wendy. Um, I actually listened to her podcast where she had Dr. Bolson on the radio, and I thought it was very well done. It's a pretty cool podcast you got going. I also saw they have a YouTube channel, and I actually linked my YouTube to your YouTube. And uh, maybe we could do a future uh, video at some point, maybe future podcast, huh? Show me some love, all right? All right, so anyways, let's talk about sugar cravings. Now, sugar. Sugar is a huge problem in our society, um, mostly because if you think about it, even a hundred years ago, sugar wasn't really a problem for most people simply because they couldn't get their hands on it. You know, the human physiology um, was never meant to handle, you know, pure sugar. Um, even a hundred years ago, it was mainly for royalty and, you know, it was super expensive and people use it like in things like their tea. Whereas nowadays, children are born with it, it's in baby food, it's in children's formula when they're, you know, for infants. It's in, you know, I mean, the amount of sugar we consume nowadays is just truly stunning. And it's probably, I would say that sugar intake is probably the single biggest um, factor in today's health um, disasters, probably. And it's very difficult, you know, when you're raised on sugar, like most of us are, and then you're trying to break yourself of a habit, you know, it's a lifelong habit, you know, you've been addicted to it since you're young, and then all of a sudden you like, got to go, go cold turkey when you're in a nutritional bouncing program, and you know, it could be, it could be fairly difficult, I mean, let's just talk about my experience, you know, when I was on a nutritional bouncing program the first, um, like, couple months, you know, I was very strict, you know, so for like two weeks straight, I would, you know, just super strict, I mean, two infrared saunas a day, two coffee enemas a day, 70% um, cooked vegetables with protein, you know, eating blue corn every day, eating sardines, you know, absolutely perfect. And then about once every two weeks, I would just absolutely splurge for a whole day on just whatever I wanted. Just, you know, um, milk and cookies and uh, candy bars. And I, I would just sit there for like literally three hours straight and just eat as much as I possibly could. And one thing I noticed was that for me, it was very hard to control the cravings once I started, so I was really just better off avoiding it completely, because, I don't know, at least for me, once I started it, it was really hard to stop. So for that may be um, your best option, is just avoid it completely, because that, that was what was best for me. Because once, you know, once I get the taste for it, I just be like, <laughs> just eat as much as I possibly could, you know. Um, but you know, it, it happens, and if you have a cheat day once in a while, it's not that big of a deal, especially if you've been pretty strict on the program. So the things, some things that definitely help, um, one thing you realize, have to realize why you crave sugar is because your body isn't cr breaking down carbohydrates very well. And it's because you have a low blood sugar because you, um, everyone today is in slow, you know, most people today are in slow oxidation. They have a, you know, um, their thyroid's underactive, their adrenals are underactive. And so what this means is that your body isn't able to um, maintain the adequate blood sugar that it wants in your blood because your body actually you know breaks down fat and glucose and stuff to maintain a certain blood sugar level in your body that's what gives you energy it's you know sugar molecules it's breaking down fats and proteins and everything to make sugar molecules and when everything when you're in slow oxidation and your thyroid's underactive and your adrenals are worn out and everything your body can't maintain the, uh, the blood sugar that it wants and so your body wants this instant source of energy that it's used to and that's why you get the sugar cravings so things that can help with your sugar cravings, first of all, you're going to try to eat protein three times a day, especially if you're in slow oxidation. Um, eating a little bit of protein will definitely help your sugar cravings. You know, I would recommend if you get sugar cravings, um, eat a little bit of beef jerky, um, raw dairy is good, um, any source of protein. And try to eat protein with every meal. And it, you, what might have to happen is that you might have to eat a meal, you know, up to once every three hours. And um, that can help a lot of people if you're having sugar cravings and you have blood sugar problems. Because if you have sugar cravings, you most likely have blood sugar problems, like most people do have. Most people in our society today have some sort of hypoglycemia. That's why they crave sugar, you know, they want that instant fix. They need that instant source of energy because their body can't provide, um, you know, enough energy by itself. And so, one thing that can help is eat smaller meals and eat, you know, up to every three hours a day. That can definitely help. So eat like, you know, up to five, six smaller meals. Um, that might help. Um, I'm not sure how many meals you're eating a day right now. I'm guessing you're eating three a day. And so I would recommend that you span that out to about five and then just put them closer together. So eat five smaller meals every th three hours. And then if you have to, eat a little bit of protein with every meal. Um, that should help. Also, um, you know, don't keep any sugar in the house. That was a big problem for me for a while. Was that I um, was living somewhere else and I had roommates that ate you know, a lot of sugar. And... Um, 
you know, it's hard. You just got to say no. And I understand that um, you said that your husband likes to buy you a lot of sugar and stuff. And, you know, maybe you could work something out where you kind of, he like, kinda, like hides it in his room. You know, that might be something you could look into where kind of like you can't really see it. You know, it's not. Because I understand that it is difficult, you know, when you open up the cupboards and, um, you know, there's all these things you want to eat. I've definitely been there before and I feel you. So, number one, you're going to try to limit it, limit it in your house. Um, you know, avoid as much as possible. Maybe have your husband put in his room or something. Have him not eat it around you if any way possible. Second of all, to try to avoid it completely, because I find that people, when they have cheat meals, they tend to just, you know, it's it's harder to break yourself, you know what I'm saying? It's like a drug, you know, that's what it is. It's like, sugar is basically a drug in our society today. And then third of all, eat lots of protein, okay? And um, try to eat smaller meals at closer intervals. That should help maintain your blood sugar a lot better, um, eating that protein um, every three hours. Hope that helps, and I'll talk to you guys later.